What's up, guys? Welcome to Good Bad Wrestling, No Holds Barred. This is the show where we dig up bad wrestling from the past and then bury it again. I am your host, John. And I'm a retard. <laughs> I mean, I'm Jack Brink, sorry. <laughs> so, what what we're going to cover today is uh, four of the worst rip-off gimmicks in wrestling history. Um, this, this was the ir- original intention for this episode but uh you had another idea that that has since been canned so we uh our original idea was we're gonna do some terrible gimmicks and while researching came across some information on uh the first one we will cover all right well before we do this you want to get into social media shout outs all that kind of stuff yes so you guys can find us (laughs) all over every social media um, mm-hmm. except for TikTok because we're grown men. So you can find us on Twitter. Uh, we're at good bet. What is, what is the Twitter now? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Twat. You know Tweet. what? You know what? Just, <laughs> just search it. We're on there. We're on Instagram. Look us up there. Also we're on Facebook. Uh, we're on YouTube. If you're looking at our big dumb faces, super kick the subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Let us know what morons we are. Um, t- tell us how great TikTok is. I don't know. <laughs> how really okay. ridiculously good looking we are. <laughs> yeah, really, really <laughs> terribly ridiculously good looking. All right. Um, so, like I said, this is four of the worst ripoff gimmicks in history. But it almost was the number one. It was, it was almost <laughs> only one. So we're researching and come up with a list and you send me a list of some terrible gimmicks. And on there was one that's made quite a few lists and is a So, absolutely. So absolutely. I go, all right, well, I'll cover this. So I start doing a little research and reading and I come across an article that goes into the, uh, the depths of Arachnaman. And I, uh, if people don't know, you're a huge comic book fan. I'm a uh, semi, I'm a comic book movie fan <laughs> and <laughs> You're not much. Of a no, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of pictures, but it's still, there's still words. And, and I said to myself, holy shit, John is going to love this. So I call you and text you and say, let's just cover this because it's going to blow your fucking mind. And you're like, what? I just, you know, it was a stupid character and that was it. <laughs> So the article I read, I go through this thing for hours and I take four pages of notes and it breaks down the history of comic book movies (laughs) and how uh, DC and Marvel are struggling um, to make films and movies and they're not popular, um, trying to trying to make real life uh, shows. It probably would have made sense if I fucking knew more about comics. Um, And it talks about how uh, CBS had... um, Incredible Hulk, but it didn't want to be looked at as the uh, superhero channel um, because they also had Wonder Woman and the Spider-Man show. And um, this whole thing on Spider-Man gets greenlit for a movie. Um, And originally, Tom Cruise was set to play play Peter Parker. (laughs) Catherine Hepburn was going to play May. What? (laughs) Bob Hoskins was going to play um, Green Lantern and Stan Lee was going to play the editor of the, the Daily Planet or whatever. The... So this whole thing that got canned because the uh, the film company sold to Columbia. There was a big dispute and Ted Turner jumped in and Ted Turner said, you know what? Uh, Sony will help you out, give you some money um, to help make this film, which... James Cameron wrote a. <laughs> you bought all. Of James this. Cameron wrote the, the script. Arnold wanted to play, Doctor Octopus. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and Ted Turner said, "I'll help Sony out because there's some litigation. I'll give some money, but I want rights to Spider Man." And they said, "Okay, cool." So he comes up with this idea. They said WCW president Bill Watts said in an interview that Ted Turner was smoking crack when he thought of the idea. (laughs) 
at no point are you thinking to yourself, this no. might not be real. No. <laughs> Tony Schiavone is... I can never hear his name as Shivani again. That he he loves this idea. That Bischoff loves the idea. And that's that was the driving force behind Bischoff's, uh, Bischoff's creation of Glacier and Mortis. And... <laughs> And then they go into how uh, Turner spends a quarter million dollars on an entrance, the entrance design for a Green Goblin character, <laughs> because he was going to fly in on cables. On uh, and and those numbers, I was like, yeah, that makes about sen- that makes some sense because we covered Glacier. They spent a ton of money on some bullshit, so yeah, I was like, all fair. right, it's getting ready to go, and then the movie gets scrapped. Marvel sends a thing to Turner and says, don't do this anymore. Uh, and he goes, I'm going to make some money back. So he does the Arachna, Arachna man character loses $500 million on <laughs> that character plus 250 <laughs> on green goblin. I'm reading this whole thing and I am just, <laughs> I am, what do you say? Harder than Chinese algebra. I don't know. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm like, this is going to be great. And then I get to the last paragraph. It's like, if you believe this, just remember this is April Fool's Day. God damn it. <laughs> so so you called me and you said, we don't need to cover any more ripoff yeah. characters. We only need a Arachnaman. I'm four, I'm hours into this. I'm m- multiple pages of notes. You call me back 20 minutes later. And the first thing you say is, fuck my life. <laughs> I glossed over so much in this stupid rendition right now because, oh, God, I am an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you a pass when it comes to the WCW uh, stuff and spending money and going out of their way to do stuff. That all sounds beyond plausible, and we'll get into more characters and why. They, the, they, the, they, comic book, they had, the comic book stuff, though. <laughs> Come on, man. They had... They had uh, in there, they were like, at first they were talking about Brian Pillman playing uh, Arachnaman, but he didn't want to wear a mask. And then Brad Armstrong, who did play Arachnaman, and we'll get into that, he was going to play it. And the Green Goblin uh, nemesis was, they, they talked about um, Tiger Mask and <laughs> Pegasus Kid playing. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, Ben Wallace can play Green Goblin? Like, this is great. <laughs> I'm going to send you the article because it's, it's so good and in depth. Like (laughs) just when I think you can't get any dumber, you go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself. Oh man. It was, I was so fucking excited and I, uh, dropped the ball. So, (laughs) um, would you like to tell us the actual story of Arachnaman? Well, the actual story of Arachnaman is, uh, not as exciting. Um, and (laughs) In 92, uh, WCW decided they were going to make this uh, uh, Spider-Man character. I, seriously, Arachnaman. I, like if yeah, it, so it, <laughs> he's wearing purple. If you haven't. If you haven't seen him, he instead of wearing red and blue, he's wearing purple and yellow. And the the webs are uh, there. It's, it's, it, <laughs> It, there's web. It just is Spider-Man, uh, <laughs> except for that the 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 costume design webs are just squares. He's just graphing paper. It's almost. <laughs> it, it's basically if if anyone hasn't seen it, you're playing uh, WCW NWO Revenge, and there's a Spider-Man character, and you just go in and you edit the costume and change the colors, and that's Arachnaman, yeah. and he yeah. shot webs out of his wrist. Uh, Brad Armstrong. Like I said, Brad Armstrong uh, played Arac- or wrestled as Arachnaman, um, the late Brad Armstrong from the Armstrong family, and that lasted very, very a very short time before Marvel sent a cease and desist letter to WCW and said, "Yeah, not on our watch." <laughs> there's there's a lot of cease and desists on this list of four. <sighs> um, I, uh, yes, was it was it just the one match? I think there was a couple, um, okay, but nothing. He was from what Web yeah. City, Florida, or <laughs> 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 some stupid. <laughs> shit. That's 
that's amazing. We, I was thinking about today too, while I was researching this, that we could do an episode about our, uh, our promotion, our company that we invented. That is nothing but the worst gimmick. Oh man. <laughs> Dude. Um, and definitely somebody would be from web city, Florida yep. <laughs> in, in our, our terrible promotion. Oh man. Um, all right. So <laughs> moving on. <laughs> real life um the next the next one on our list of terrible ripoff gimmicks is renegade um if you are new to being a wrestling fan and you didn't get to experience renegade um you didn't miss much uh so here's here's the story renegade is a flat out uh admitted blatant ultimate warrior ripoff with all of the wrestling skill and none of the charisma. The story goes, Hulk Hogan <laughs> leaves WWF. He signed with WCW in 1994. Eric Bischoff uh, with Ted Turner's money to re-enlist all of his old foes and friends, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Macho Man, Earthquake, um, the Nasty Boys, Jimmy Hart. He's just loading up WCW with all of these people. But there's one toy in the <laughs> toy box that just won't come to life, and that would be Jim Helwig, the Ultimate Warrior. So they are in negotiations with Warrior. And according to Bischoff, never close. It was never close to signing a deal at all but they were so confident that they were going to that they started promoting the ultimate warrior for uncensored 1995 and hogan's doing promos where he's talking about the the his match with vader that's coming up and and uh <clears throat> that he's going to even the odds with the ultimate teammate and all this <laughs> stuff and he's just very seriously intimating that the ultimate warrior is going to be there there the deal doesn't happen, so they go and they find uh, Richard Wilson, who is a former um, exotic dancer, <laughs> and he's got long, like, uh, uh, teased hair, and he's in pretty good shape. He's not in warrior shape. And Hogan cuts this promo where he's standing in front of, like, smoke, and he's doing the Hogan nonsense. And then he goes, he's talking to, to Vader and Ric Flair, and he's going, oh, yeah, brother, 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 I've got the ultimate backup plan. It's got, I've got the, ult he just keeps using the word ultimate over and over again. But then he finally says, it's not the ultimate warrior. It's the ultimate swerve. It's the ultimate, like, coup, as though he pulled one over on Vader and Ric Flair, like he really showed them. <laughs> and, and the camera pulls back. And there's just a, a silhouette of muscle with smoke, and you never actually see Renegade's face. You just see smoke and an outline, and it looks just like the Ultimate Warrior on purpose. And Hogan goes, it's the Renegade, brother. And then he does the what you're going to do for half an hour. <clears throat> Fast forward to Uncensored 95. Renegade makes his debut. Jimmy Hart is his manager, and he was making the music in WCW at the time. His music is one note away from the Ultimate Warriors music. It gets a pop initially, <laughs> and then he comes out, and the fans are like, huh? They completely and utterly intentionally misled the fans to thinking that this guy was the Ultimate Warrior. He's not. He has an R painted on his face. <laughs> That's, it's like clumpy. <laughs> um, yeah, so he, he toils around in WCW for a while until they lose interest. Um, he he even won like the U.S. title, I think, in the, or the TV title. And then they lost interest in him. The fans didn't care. Nobody cared. He had no no talent, no charisma. Um, all he had was an R painted on his face and pecs. So they they have Jimmy Hart uh, break up with him and wipe the paint off of his face and then turn him into like a. I guess a native sort of character. <laughs> and then they just axed him in 99. Uh, Eric Bischoff is quoted as saying recently on his podcast. Uh, let's see <laughs> if, if we were ever guilty of ripping off WWE, this was it. 
could you possibly get anyone to do a worse job of ripping off the Ultimate Warrior? The answer is no. <laughs> That's a direct quote from Eric Bischoff. <laughs> well, one thing that I love about that's so good bad about wcw is the use of this the ultimate the hogan using ultimate right when they have the debut of the shock master his tag team is will shock the world <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> man there's something that i love about like pre-96 wcw and when i say love i mean it's the worst crap imaginable and it makes me laugh so much um so uh before we get get any further arachnaman good bad or disqualified (laughs) actual story of (laughs) arachnaman the real story yeah (laughs) disqualified it's like it, it there's no there was no impact of it right it's just yeah yeah it, it's it's a, it's just a funny image that was a bad idea that they should have known they were going to get a cease and desist on yeah. right away uh Re- renegade good bad or disqualified oh man so good bad <laughs> <laughs> the the concept disqualified yeah. <clears throat> to even think of it in the first place to even have hogan do this just to get a win back um disqualified the actual execution good bad it's such a wcw thing yeah hilariously poorly executed (laughs) oh man all right next up i have uh that i think they call them the toxic turtles (laughs) (laughs) so this has been going around on instagram for the last like week or so so back in 1993 or actually for, for quite a while, Dwayne Gill, Gilberg, and his partner, uh, Barry, Barry Hardy, I think it was, tagged. Yeah. They were the executioners. They were a team called the executioners. They did a whole whole bunch of gimmicks. He, he was trying to get hired, right? They were trying to get more TV time. So he had made these costumes, Ninja Turtle costumes, made two of them. And... The story is <clears throat> they, he would bring him to tapings, never wore them. And then one day he's wearing it in the locker room and he's doing the whole like break dance, rolling on the shell, the whole thing. And, <laughs> and he looks up and McMahon is standing there staring at him and he goes, who the hell is in that thing? <laughs> and, and he takes it off and he goes, of course. <laughs> And he goes, he goes, do you got another one of those? And he goes, actually, I do. He goes, put them on, be on the ring in 10 minutes. <laughs> so that's, so, and, so, and that, that was a one-off. Yeah. So they go out and they have like their move is the shell shock. <laughs> they do, they do a spot where, uh, Hardy, like he, he gets slammed or rolls on his back and he's kicking in the air like he can't get up off his shell <laughs> and the fans are screaming and Gil Gilbert goes over and like rolls him over and uh that was the only time they did it uh he said he never got hired from it nothing ever happened because of it. He, th- <laughs> he thinks that there was like pressure for obviously licensing reasons that they can't do it they couldn't call him ninja turtles But it's, (laughs) there were Ninja Turtle costumes. Um, He was asked in an interview if he's ever used them since. And he said he's won a couple costume contests. (laughs) (laughs) They, they're not, they're not similar to the Ninja Turtles. They're not themed. They are Ninja Turtles. (laughs) They are, they are head to toe. No, no visible skin. They're (laughs) like, of course they weren't going to be allowed to continue to do that. And, and you're not talking about doing it now when the nostalgia is past. You're talking about 1993. It's the most popular thing in all of pop culture at the time. (laughs) Now you would see that in a, uh, like hood slam would do something like that. Um, Kaiju big battle. Who, who who was hilarious would, would do something like that. Uh, There's another video I found in Mexico, there was a match. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to read it. My Spanish is a little rusty. Um, <laughs> the Tortugas Ninjas battling the Tortuguilos Karategas. 
Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. So basically, um, basically two teams of Ninja Turtles fighting each other. <laughs> For whatever reason, I was I was trying to put together this list of rip-off characters, right? And most of the stuff that I found comes from Mexico. Mexico has Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles and, and like, Thundercats. And, like, I don't know why. I, I, I have no explanation for this. But Mexico gets a pass on this stuff. Yeah. Like, it, it, if you've ever been to any part of mexico they're they're selling knockoff luchador masks and knockoff spider-man masks and knock knockoff simpsons stuff and it just is the culture there that's just what they do and no and no <laughs> no one cares yeah it's not like they're not they're not getting cease and desist there no gilberg on the other hand yeah tisk tisk <laughs> all right last on our list um is glacier I did some research on this by listening to us talk about it on our episode <laughs> titled The Rise and Fall of Glacier. So if you want to know the full and complete <clears throat> top to bottom, everything there is to know about Glacier, go back and listen to that episode. But for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> Glacier was WCW's attempt at Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Um, they never got the cease and desist. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't have to have to cancel it. They just forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> Let it toil up up until the end, which I'll talk about in a second. But yeah, so Glacier was. Uh, I can't remember his his real name. I probably should have taken this down. Oh well. Uh, he uh, <laughs> he's a Georgia karate man, <laughs> and they gave him lasers and snow and a painted eye and a, and a contact lens and, and a 400 year old helmet. And they made up a story about how he went to ancient Japan and learned how to control the elements. They put in the work Raymond Lloyd to rip off. Yes. Raymond Lloyd. Thank you to, to rip off sub zero from, from Mortal Kombat. Biggest, biggest debut ever. Like most, most pop and circumstance debut. Yeah, ever. it might be. <clears throat> Uh, and worst ending ever. After two years of toiling away in WCW on TV, he sold his gimmick to <laughs> Ernest the Cat Miller. <laughs> tried to w- tried to sell him the WCW. shoulder pads and everything. <laughs> the, he sold him the contact lens and a bottle of saline. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Um, didn't uh di- didn't end well for for glacier i think we already determined on that episode that glacier is good bad. Oh, yeah. um there's no there's, there's no other way to look at glacier other than good good buddy dan at norcal wrestling posted a, a question earlier this week that what talent outside of northern california did he want did do we want to see wrestle here and i said glacier <laughs> oh that was you i was just gonna say somebody yeah. <laughs> i would love to see glacier here that was definitely me um toxic turtles good bad or disqualified dude it's so good bad like (laughs) just the idea that that was that was a way of hey maybe maybe we can get signed because of this (laughs) (laughs) what's funniest about that story is just that vince saw it and had and had to see it like had yeah. to have it the go go out to the ring this is funny <laughs> the thing i think i like about that over say arachnaman is <clears throat> it wasn't like it might it was his way of ripping it off right but it wasn't from the the higher ups going we're going to try to capitalize on somebody else it's him going but yeah, this yeah. is this is goofy. Maybe 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 somebody will notice us, and then he's break dancing. And he's like, "Hey, good shit, pal. Get out there in ten minutes." Like, <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert had actually had quite a career. Like he, I mean, he's been in wrestling for a long time, doing yeah tons of different yeah. tons of different crap. And I think it's I think it's, it's hilarious. Crap is the right yeah. word. <laughs> <laughs> crap is the right word. Um, all right, guys, get at us. Um, I, like, I I literally cannot remember any of our social media today. I Facebook, just, just Facebook at Good Bad Wrestling Podcast, Instagram. Yep. That sounds right. GB two or GB Wrestling nope. on Instagram. Mm, GB Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't do do the twatter. So I don't. Twitter. 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 Good. Good. Bad. NHB. That's what it uh, is. There you go. Um. Yeah. So. So get at us. 
let us know any other knockoffs that you know of, for instance, demolition, um, things of that nature. I think there was, I think there was like nature. a Manitar or something like that. That I, that I saw on yeah, there's, dude, there's, there's, there's a, the list is long. Um, but yeah, let us know if you are listening to us on the podcast version, stick around. Cause we're going to give you the news for the week. Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment and let us know what you guys think of the show. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs>